Let's now implement the get Fibonacci sequence uh, method. So now again, you can see that in the return type, it's an integer array. So that means we have to create an array internally inside the method and return it. And, and, and the size of the array depends on uh, the input parameter i. Okay, let's review. Uh, let's see what a Fibonacci sequence is. Uh, it's already explained here. I assume already read the, uh, the description. Let me summarize uh, that very quickly. And we can make the assumption that the input i is larger than or equal to zero. It's not going to be negative, but what if it's zero? What if it's one? What if it's two? And etc. Okay. So now let's look at uh, this explanation over here. So Fibonacci sequence itself can be infinite. So now the i over here is simply going to give us the uh, first i elements in the Fibonacci sequence. When i is zero, that means we want to get the first zero. That's pretty much like getting the, uh, the first zero elements in an arithmetic sequence. That would just give us empty array. Similar idea. Okay, let's now just study the sequence very quickly. Okay, so now for Fibonacci sequence over here, is always the case. The first, uh, first element is always one. The second element is always one. So these two are always fixed. So that means when you say, first of all, when you say get Fibonacci sequence, uh, the zeroth elements, in that case, it will just return empty array, okay? Rather than null array, empty array. Similar to when you say you want to get a zeroth, uh, the first zero elements from the arithmetic sequence, it will just be empty array. And what about if I want to get the first, uh, the first elements of the Fibonacci sequence, it will just give me an array of size one of index zero, and it will just be one corresponding to the first element over here. So what about if I have over here, get Fibonacci sequence two, in that case, I will return an array of size two. Okay. So with index zero and one, and then one and one. So that corresponds to the first two elements. So it seems like zero, one, and two. So these are the three special cases for us. Okay. And now what about the five over here? Okay. You will also return an array of size five. Okay, what, that's what you will do, right? Corresponding to the size. One, two, three, four, and five. So zero, one, two, three, and four being the indices, and one, and one. Okay, now how do we fill in this, this, and this? How do we do that? So here, let's see the rule. The rule is starting from the third elements over here, uh, starting from the third elements. So this element over here is going to be the summation of the previous two elements because uh, the, the first uh, element that applies to this rule is going to be the third one. So it's guaranteed there must be at least two previous elements in the before that. Okay, so now that means for the blue one, it's going to be the summation of the two previous one. So that'll be one plus one, that'll be two. Okay, so now how do we know the next one? The next one, let me use a different color over here. So now how do we calculate this element over here? It's the fourth element in the Fibonacci sequence. So it's going to be the second plus the third. Okay, hopefully you see that. I want more. What about over here? Let's say, how do we know the value for uh, this position over here? So this is the fifth number in the Fibonacci sequence. So it's going to be the third and fourth, the summation of the, th uh, the two. So that'd be two plus three. So that'll be five. Okay, so now as an exercise for you, so what should be, so now we got eight, uh, 13 and 21. So what will be the next one? So the next one is gonna be the summation of the previous two, which is gonna be 13 plus 21. So which will be uh, 34. Okay, that's how you calculate. Okay, hopefully you see the pattern over here. So now that means, for well now, if I just want to run this, I can I already know zero and one. The, uh, the first two elements are always fixed to be one and one. Now how do, so I can start from uh, index zero over here. I can start from that. And now how do I know, uh, how do I fill in the contents for this one over here? The way to do it is by, let's say currently the loop counter is I. So what I should do is I should really go to uh, elements at position I minus one and also position I minus two. Okay, go there and retrieve the elements, and then I will get just two. And similarly, when I increment uh, to go to the next iteration, i is pointing to here, and then I'll, uh, position i minus one will be here, position i minus two 
will be here. So one plus two, I will get three. And then when I increment i further to the last iteration over here, so now you can see a pos uh, position i minus one will be here, and position i minus two will be here. So I got three plus two, which will give me five. Okay, that's how I calculate. That's how the loop should work. So now let's make it work in Java. Okay, hopefully you can see the illustration. Okay, so now if you go back there, let's see uh, what we can do. Okay, so now what I will do is I will simply do, uh, let's declare the sequence that we, we would like to return. Integer array sequence is assigned to new integer array of size i. Return the sequence. Okay, eventually. So now we know that the special, uh, so now we know that uh, in the case where uh, the Fibonacci, uh, the i is simply just equal to zero, we just return the, uh, we just return uh, empty array. We don't even bother to uh, re, uh, re, uh, initialize anything. Okay. So what I would say is, I would say if i is larger than or equal to zero, in that case, I'll do something over here. Especially, I know I got at least one element over there, so I can at least initialize uh, the first element to be one. That's what I can do. You can see that if uh, this condition over here happens to be false, that, mean, that means we'll bypass the body of the if branch over here, and then we just go to return exactly sequence being empty, okay? So now we know that, okay, now let's see over here. Okay, now, if we reach this point, that means i larger than zero is, uh, uh, reaching here, i is larger than or equal to one, right? This is really equivalent to i is strictly larger than zero. I'm just playing with the relation a little bit, okay? So now we know we got at least one element. So now, but it could be that uh, the case, uh, in the case where i is equal to zero, we by pass the body of the if statements, okay? So now we got another special case to do. So now it could be that i is exactly just equal to one, right? In which case we just need to have an array of size one and only copy the first element of this Fibonacci sequence over here, right? In that case, we can simply say uh, in the case where i is equal to just one, we should bypass the body of another if statements, which I'm gonna do now. So I can say if i is strictly larger than one, which means we got at least two elements over there. So now when we can reach this point, reaching here, i is larger than equal to two, right? Which is equivalent to i is strictly larger than one, right? I just wanna show you more explicitly. So now in this case, I can also set sequence one to be one. So now up to now, I want you to run, uh, I want you to run a little bit more uh, some test cases with you just uh, over here. If i is equal to zero, that means zero larger than zero will be false, which means we bypass the entire thing and then return sequence being empty array. So that's correct. In the case where i is equal to one, that means we in, uh, we create an array of size one over here, and then one larger than zero is true. So we set the first elements of the array to be one, which is pretty much like this case over here, okay? And then one larger than one would be false, which means we bypass everything over here. And then we simply return that particular array of size one, okay, like that, okay? So now, what if uh, this uh, i is equal to two, three, or four, or onwards? In this case, I'm gonna do the following, okay? So now I would say four integer, uh, we already got i over here, so I, cannot, uh, I better not use i to clash with it, so I can use j. So I'm gonna start with uh, index two over here. So I would say integer j is assigned to two. And then j is less than i, because i will be the uh, i will be the size of the array if you like you can also say sequence.length if you like okay that's also equivalent but i'll just say i over here and then j plus plus okay over there i'm gonna say pretty much like this i said before for the loop counter i'm gonna calculate uh the summation of the previous two elements minus one and minus two right so what i would do is i can say sequence of element j and position j 
is assigned to sequence at position j minus 1 uh, plus sequence at position j minus 2, the two previous elements. That's what I would do. Okay? Okay, so now that we're reaching here. Okay, let me give you another special case over here. So now, in the case where i is exactly equal to 2, which is this case over here, where i is equal to 2, what's going to happen? So now when i is equal to 2, you will see that since we uh, initialize j to be 2, so 2 less than 2 would be false. That means we do not bother to actually go inside to this uh, loop over here, and then we simply just return the array with the sequence at position 0 being 1, and the sequence at position 1 being 1, and then return the array directly without executing this. So it's just correct. Okay, We by pass the body of the loop. Okay, You can see that it's just running some special cases with you. Okay, That's exactly this case over here. Okay, over here. Okay, so now I think that'll, that'll be it. So now let's just test our code. Okay, let's go to utilities tester. And then that's what we have, get Fibonacci sequence over here. Okay, you can see that over here, we are calling some helper method, which I define over here for you. You can feel free to study that, it's not difficult. So that you can also refer to the lecture notes. We talked about given some integer array, how we can output a string representation starting from curly brackets and ending with curly brackets and separated each element with comma. Okay, that's something I can leave to you. Yeah, it's a case study. Okay, let's go back to uh, get Fibonacci sequence over here. So I just get different uh, size for you. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, let's have a quick look to see what we have. Let's execute a tester. And let's see what we get. So when we get, fi get Fibonacci sequence over here, you can see when i is equal to 0, so we got empty sequence. Okay, and then when i is equal to 1, we got an array of size 1. And then it was just one. And when i is equal to two, we got exactly one one. Right? You can see it's one and one one, and also empty array. That's exactly what we said before. And now let's also see what about over here. Let's say five. Okay, five over here. That's also what we got. We got one one two three five. Right? One one two three five. Okay. Let's go a little bit further. If I got seven, you can see one one two three five. You can see a over here is exactly equal to three plus five. And 13 over here is exactly equal to 5 plus 8. So things just work. Okay. So now uh, you can also try to compare how we did this get Fibonacci sequence method with the previous one we did, which is about get arithmetic sequence. You will see that the code structure is rather similar. So the uh, the bottom line is whenever you're trying to program in this kind of meth, uh, program, you, you should really just draw yourself some diagrams and to see what the special cases are. In the case of Fibonacci sequence, it's like this. And in the case of the uh, arithmetic sequence, it's like that, right? Think about those special cases and how to derive in general. That's how you solve this kind of problem.